So famous YouTuber holds mass DIY baptisms over the internet. So normally when baptisms happen, you see them happening on Sundays. They call it water baptism Sunday or baptism Sunday, telling everybody to get baptized. You got the people who are getting baptized. They got the shirts that don't have nothing on them. And then as soon as they get baptized, the graphic shows, I just got baptized. And then you see the dudes coming out the water fired up with the t-shirts, water going everywhere. You got the girls wiping their eyes of water and their hair is all slicked back because they just got baptized and they're excited and they're hugging their friends, all that good stuff, right? Scratch all of that and now you have mass baptisms done DIY style over the internet. Bring in Richard Lorenzo Jr., who is a famous YouTuber who has over 200,000 subscribers and he's also a pastor of what I, I believe Remnant Revival Outreach Center. Uh, he's a pastor of a church, but he has a YouTube channel and he's doing a stream about a month ago about baptisms. Right. And he has people on this Zoom and it's spread out it's like 50 something people and they're all in different places and they're in a bat in their bathrooms and their bathtubs. Right. With We're about to watch the video and react to the video, but they're they're getting baptized, but they're not getting baptized with other, like somebody dunking, dunking them down in the water. They're baptizing themselves. I want you all to repeat after me, all of you, all of you that are giving your life to Christ, all of you, even on the YouTube, if you're not getting baptized, you, you just, you just want to give your life to Christ, I want you guys to, I want you to, all the ones, everyone that put a one in the chat, everyone repeat after me that's giving their life to Christ or even getting baptized. I want you to say, now I want you to say, Jesus, I repent of my sins. Say it. I repent of my sins. Say, I turn my back on my sins. Say, I hate my sins. Come on. Say, I'm born again right now. And you see people all say, over the I place. when I go under that water, I'm getting married to you, Jesus. Now, here's my first objection. My, here's my first objection. He said, getting married to you, Jesus, right? Um, a lot, and what I was looking at in the comments of the video, a lot of people were, were um, talking about baptism unto salvation right and that's what it kind of sounds like when he says i'm getting i'm when i go into this water i'm married to you jesus as he's equating uh, he's saying baptism is unto salvation right and that's a popular teaching within the church of christ right i've had run-ins with like old people from from college who believed in the church of christ right and i didn't really know what it was until about a, a few years ago uh, when i had that run-in but there's a there's a a, a a, a popular section within Christianity is called Church of Christ, and they believe in baptism unto salvation. They use Acts two thirty eight um, as their as their basis, right? But there's several other scriptures that prove that you know. And I always believe in more than two two or three witnesses having two or three witnesses in the scripture. So there's multiple witnesses that disprove baptism is unto salvation, right? And what he's saying here is equivalent to baptism unto salvation. So hopefully that's not what he's saying, because um, that's in error, as I believe that's in error. So let's continue watching. All right. Now look at and me, this guys. dude eating. <laughs> it's a dude eating right now. As as in there, water. like he's not even getting baptized. He's just so watching for, or maybe he just, maybe I'm he just watching. Christ. When I say die with Christ, you go fully under the water and you and got everybody up. in their bathtubs. I'm gonna say rise with Christ, and then I'm gonna pray for you. I'm gonna pray that you would receive the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I want you to speak in tongues with me. But the evidence of speaking in tongues. Okay. Okay. All right. Hold your nose. Close your eyes, focus on Jesus, and please don't hit your head when you go back. And see, and so he says, please don't hold, please cl close your eyes and don't hit your head when you go back. So that's one of the risks, and I'm getting too early into my point, but that's one of the risks of doing the whole water baptism DIY style. It's you run the risk of injury, man. If somebody go in a lake and baptize themselves, they could drown and, you know, swallow a whole bunch of water, not know what's going on, right? So it's like, that's usually a guide. Like having a person that's usually a guide, you know, as, as a barrier. So by removing the guide and saying, oh, do it yourself, you run a risk of falling back and all crazy and going crazy because you're doing it yourself, right? So um, while there is nothing I haven't seen in the word against um you baptizing yourself usually how you seen it done in scriptures with the examples there's jesus getting baptized by john there's an ethiopian eunuch getting uh baptized by i believe it was philip one of the apostles 
um, he get, gets baptized by Philip, right? And then all over the book of Acts, you see several other examples of people not getting baptized by themselves, right? You're doing it with community. Uh, somebody is leading you, one of the apostles were leading these individuals, right? So usually you don't see baptism by itself. While I'm not discrediting or saying that those baptisms are invalid, I'm never doing nothing like that. I applaud the effort and the energy and the creativity of of reaching people through the internet and holding, you know, services to, to, to reach people and, uh, get them saved, et cetera. Right. But I think baptism is kind of where you draw the line just because that's like a, usually a two person event, right? Usually, um, when I, and I'm also not against like the recreational side of it, like people using bathtubs. I've seen people get bap baptized in trash cans. I've seen people get baptized in little tin cans that fit people that you put on the ground, um, that usually put ice in. I've seen people get baptized in there, so I'm not uh, I'm not uh, offended or uh, mad at the recreational style. I just think it should have been done with another person, like having another person. I believe one person had somebody in there helping them or with them, right? I think that's the more appropriate way, right? I don't think that you should be doing it by yourself because you run the risk. But then also, that's not the picture that's painted in the Bible. <laughs> I don't want to have to pray for healing. All right. I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit in the mighty precious name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach. Die with Christ under the water. Eating. I'm just under the water, all the way. Come on. And, and they're going and they're, and they're baptizing for them and they're trying to hey, get up. Hallelujah. I just, I just, I just, I'm just not, I'm just not a fan. I just don't get it. Just, nah, that just ain't it. That's just, that's just not it, man. That That's, that's not it. I think that there's a better way. Like, like not saying that those baptisms are invalid. Don't think, I'm not saying none of that, right? I just think there's a better way and it's a safer way. And I just think it's a way more po poignant to scripture that points towards scripture. You have another person there with you, but let's continue watching. Glory be to God. Hey, hey. All right. Put your hand on your head. You're say, hey, put your hand on your head. I'm going to pray for you right now. You're going to receive the Holy Ghost. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray, Lord, that you would fill him with the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, fill every true believer. You know who truly surrendered. And I believe it's And you see people, people right with now. their hands fill up with, fill with your love, in the your bathtub peace, your with their hands up. Right I see one right here. Name. Fill them, Lord. Fill them, Lord. And they're praying. Now open up your mouth and pray in the Holy and this dude's just <laughs> eating. <laughs> Pray in the Holy Spirit. Open up your mouth and pray in tongues. There you go. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Like a trumpet, I want you to pray from the stomach, from your belly, rivers of living water, that diaphragm of faith, that fire. Okay. Um, so that's it so that's the latter part of it right and that's another part of the video so he the comments were outraged too because they were thinking saying that you know uh or they were alluding to saying that he i guess i don't know if he does or he doesn't but alluding to the fact that he might believe that you know um ha evidence of the of like speaking in tongues is the fruit of the holy spirit when that's not like that's not the evidence of the holy spirit evidence of the holy spirit is 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 the fruit of, of the spirit right and we're all given the holy spirit once we once we come become born again because ephesians 1 13 talks about how you're sealed with the holy spirit of promise once you get born again right so you're all i believe every believer and i believe in speaking in tongues but i believe every believer um is filled with the holy spirit once they get born again right but i do believe that there is a a, a separate experience of being able to um, pray in the Holy Spirit, pray in uh, other tongues and your heavenly language, things of that nature. Right. But I, I'm not one of those that believes that all oh, that's evidence of salvation one or evidence two of the Holy Spirit. Right. That's a normal lot. Uh, that's a, a normal word of faith teaching where they believe that if you um, pray in other tongues or if you don't have the ability to pray in other tongues and you're not saved. So uh, everybody's not going to speak in tongues. Some people are spooked out by it. Some people don't believe it. Some people don't believe in healing, signs and wonders and, and tongues and everything like that. And that's fine, right? But we can't, we can't, 
mutual make the Holy Spirit mutually exclusive to people who who speak in tongues when Scripture doesn't show that, right? But Scripture does show that there is a uh, you know uh, an experience of being able to speak in other tongues, right? And I do believe every believer has the ability to be able to tap into that and to um you know and to and to to do that, right? And that it's beneficial for the salvation, but to push that and to say that you know um you're you're not filled with the holy spirit until you speak with other tongues or you don't have the holy spirit or you're not saved until you speak with tongues i just don't think that's the way right and then also too i think and i bring back one of my thoughts because i had to shoot this video over again but it's bringing back one of my 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 thoughts two thoughts the first thought is if you're going to lead people to uh, speak with other tongues and lead them into that, teach them about it first, man. Like, teach them about it. Don't just say, okay, I'm about to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Because some some people, a lot of times, a barrier to receiving, you know, to, to uh, speaking other tongues and things of that nature is people don't understand enough about it and they see it on TV and they people talking about Shondo or Shaba Baba and they doing all the crazy stuff and they faking it. Right. And they're, they're faking it. It's not a true, you know, true experience. Right. And that's no, normally what people, people see. They don't see the teaching and going through the word. Like right here, I got a book right here on tongues. Right. I got a book right here on tongues that I have from, from Kenneth Hagen from back in the day. And it's a whole book about it right because i believe people should be taught right and the second it goes into my second thing while i i applaud the effort and the creativity to do the baptisms online and things of that nature i do hope that in getting people saved on on internet i do hope that there is a component a discipleship component that he's going to add to you know getting these people to save right normally what we do in the in the church especially in the black church, but normally what we do in the church is we get people saved and we just send them out, right? And we don't send them out with no teaching. We don't tell them uh, what book to start with first. We don't tell them uh, what scripture to start with first. We don't plug them into no community and things of that nature, right? And I think that's dangerous and, and enables people to fall back into old lifestyles and old things, right? So I definitely think if hopefully he, after he got them saved, he got off of there and he sent them links to some discipleship metrics or help them get plugged in with his church or whatever else, right? So hopefully that's what's happened and it's not just people getting saved and getting baptized and there's no discipleship component afterwards. But let me know how you guys feel in the comments about this video. Do you believe that baptism shouldn't be done in a bathtub? Do you believe um or or you know and do you believe that baptism shouldn't be DIY like do it yourself? Or do you believe kind of like how I believe where you believe baptism should be done with, you know, another at least another person present and, you know, kind of something that aligns more towards what the scripture is talking about. Let me know in the comments which how you guys feel. And until next time, peace.